was thinking about determinism and free will, partly in response to a pyro set of videos that Pyro did, which again was in response to his Omgitz Chris's video about brains, when she talked about uh, free will and Libet and desert, you know, that kind of, all kind of thing really. I mean, it seems to me that we're never going to get this really. I don't want to sound defeatist, <laughs> but I just think we're going to hide into nothing trying to understand this stuff. What I mean by that is that um, we seem to be operating in two different frames at the very least. Which is that our um, we know that Newtonian physics is deterministic. We know that Newtonian physics is deterministic. Uh, you know, a set of dominoes, a set of snooker balls colliding into each other. It's that kind of stuff. Um, we know that Newtonian physics isn't the only game in town. There's other kinds of physics. There's the physics of chaos and complexity. There's the physics of the quanta, all that kind of stuff. Uh, now I'm not trying to, I'm certainly not making any kind of suggestion that consciousness is quantum mechanics, because I don't think it is. But, you know, one thing's for sure, it's not, the, the brain is not Newtonian. You know, it's not a Newtonian engine, at the very least it's electrochemical. And electrochemical activity is not Newtonian, it's not mechanical, it's electrochemical. Uh, so there's a bit of a disconnect there. And the disconnect, I think, shows itself in our terms of our understanding. Because our understanding, this felt sense of knowing something, the felt sense of knowing, understanding, feeling intuitively aware of something, grasping an idea, that, that whole thing to do with comprehension and the feeling of knowing something is, I think, a, basically a Newtonian enterprise. What I mean by that is that, you know, we, our bodies, these, you know, six foot, slabs of meat that walk around and talk and do that kind of stuff are medium-sized objects you know this is what we are and at the scale we operate at our bodies operate at Newtonian physics is the chief determinant that's what that's the scale that's the physics that operates at the scale that our bodies operate at and everything that we engage with our dogs the fences the lake the, the feeling of the feet on the ground the food we put in our faces you know the uh, the, the partners we have sex with, all this stuff is middle-sized stuff. It's all Newtonian physics applying. Uh, and so our brains, it seems to me, not our brains so much, our minds, which are, after all, you know, engines for, for imagining this world that we live in and for predicting it and for controlling it in some way and for maximizing our survival in it and for doing all those kind of things. Our minds are designed to operate in terms of Newtonian physics. I mean, why would our minds operate anything else? I mean, they might be made of other kinds of physics. They might use other kinds of physics in their operation, particularly, as I say, the, chem the physics of, electro of electrochemistry. But, um, but the, as I say, the engines of the imagination is a Newtonian engine. It's a beam engine. It's this pump. It's this, it's, you know, it's, it's using hydraulics and pneumatics and, and mechanics. That's what I think it's using. Metaphorically speaking, of course. So our engine, the engine of our imagination, keeps trying to be deterministic. It only knows determinism, because it's that's the engine that's running it. It doesn't know the other thing. It can't know the other thing. It can't instantiate in this. You know, you, you can't build uh, a battery and a magnet out of a steam engine, I don't think. Maybe you can. But I don't think you can build an electrochemical device out of a steam engine. You know what I mean? You can't do it. You can't use pendulums and clockwork machinery and levers and pulleys and pneumatics and, uh, and hydraulics to, to, to build a large hadron collider. It won't work because the physics is all wrong. And in the same way, I don't think you can build an understanding of those kinds of things out of an imagination which is steam driven and hydraulic and pneumatic and mechanical. Which isn't to say you can't understand those things in a different way, but I don't think we'll ever be able to understand them in a way which is comprehensible and intuitively obvious and gives you that feeling of now I understand. I think that's what Feynman's on about when he says if you understand 
quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics. There's no way of understanding it. We haven't got the mental machinery to do that. We have to use tricks like mathematics and equations and forget trying to understand it. Just do the math and let the math do it solve the problem. But don't think you're ever going to understand it because it's beyond you. I suppose here I'm aligning myself with a group of people that are sometimes called the New Mysterians, pejoratively referred to as that, I don't think they call themselves that, which is uh, you know, a group of, I guess, neuroscientists, philosophers, uh, who basically say, you know, the, uh, that we'll never understand the mind. The universe is queerer than we can suppose. Consciousness is queerer than we can suppose. Uh, we can explain it and define it and do the maths on it. But, uh, but being able to suppose it, being able to understand it, literally, is beyond us because we're using Newtonian minds to think of electrochemical processes. It's not going to work, is it? I guess you have to kind of be agnostic. I mean agnostic in the literal sense, not agnostic in the sense of, oh, I don't know, you know, but agnostic in the sense of accepting not knowing. Uh, not throwing your hands up in despair and saying there's nothing you can do with this information because of course as I say you can do the maths, you can write the equations, you can make the predictions based on those maths and equations. Uh, but accept that you're never going to get that buzz of knowing, that buzz of thinking, ah oh, yes, I grasp that like it's something you can grasp, something nice and Newtonian that you can get a hold of. Not going to happen.